Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Minister Nicole Smith, and I bring you greetings from the New Life Bible Church. We're located right here in the city of Fayetteville, North Carolina. We're at 1420 Hoke Loop Road, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Our pastors are Alan S. McLaughlin. Our first lady is Norma McLaughlin. We pray this morning that you hear something that will be encouraging to your soul, something that will uplift you, something that will take you through the week. We're going to go right on into our sermon this morning. This morning, we're going to be coming from the book of Matthew. We're going to be in the 16th chapter. We're going to be reading from the 24th and the 25th verse. Our sermon topic this morning is going to be, who's in the driver's seat? Who's in the driver's seat? We're going to start in verse 24, if you can read along with me. And it says, then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. Whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. Let us pray. To our Father in heaven, we are so grateful to you. We're thankful for your many blessings. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Amen. Amen. You know, years ago, when I was younger, my dad worked for Leaf Automotive out of Raleigh um, as a mechanic, and he stayed with my sister in Raleigh. Um, and then he would come home on the weekends. And when a new line of cars would come out with Leaf, um, Leaf would give him a new one to drive. And he'd drive it for about two or three months. And then another um, another would come out and he'd give him another. Once that shipment came out, he'd give him another one. And he'd drive that one about three or four months. And that went on and went on for, for months. Um, and then, so everybody thought that we were getting a new car because it was so many of us, we would always kind of have to argue with who's going to ride shotgun and who's going to be in the front seat. And I remember um, it was me, my younger brother, and, and um, my younger sister, and we'd always argue who's going to ride in the front seat, so we had to take turns. And so um, I remember it wasn't so much about driving it was about riding in the passenger seat everybody wanted to be up front it was just something about being up front you know that made you feel superior to others you know you could see everything you know you were up front riding with the person who was driving i, I don't know it just made you feel some type of way um it made you feel like somebody but it never crossed your mind to actually drive you just wanted to be in the passenger seat next to the one driving it wasn't about control you know and so as a child it was not about how fast you was going it was not about um where you were going you didn't even care where they was going um sometimes you didn't even know where they were going and you'd ask them where are we going and they're like you know just ride and you didn't care you, you accepted that answer okay i'll just ride you know i think that's the same attitude that we have to have today eager to get into the passenger seat eager to just sit back and ride. You know, I got two points I'm going to share with you today that will encourage us to be mindful of who's really supposed to be driving. The first point that I want to share with you is you must move into the passenger seat. You must move into the passenger seat. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Matthew 16 and 24. You know, no one typically wakes up in the morning and says, I, I can't wait to deny myself today. But in order to experience this lordship, th this provision of Christ on earth, you got to be willing to say no to yourself. You know, last week we talked about our thoughts and, and the thoughts that were coming to our heads. And, and when a thought comes to our head, we have to say, where did that thought come from? But I think it's the same thing here. You've got to do two things. you got to take up your cross and follow me. First, you've got to deny yourself. You have to say no to yourself. You know, whatever your cross may be, the cross represents death. We've got to die to ourselves. Paul tells the church in Galatians, Galatians 2 and 20, he says, I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I'm simply living by faith. In the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When you say no to things, when you say no to yourself, you're saying yes to God. Remember, you died. You know, that's what it means to say no to yourself. In Colossians 3, in verses 3 through 4, it says you died and your life is hidden in Christ. When Christ, who is your life, will appear, 
then you will appear. But until then, you're hidden in Christ. You know, I'm finding that there is a lot of people who cannot handle the word no. Your no to yourself and to people has to be strong enough to withstand a negative response. There are just some people out there that they, they want what they want and they're going to get it. They don't care how they get it by any means necessary. And some people are just not disciplined enough to say no to themselves or to anybody else. But your no is still a complete sentence. I want to repeat something that I heard. He said, I got a passport and I go anywhere I want to go. But there's two places that I've decided I'm never going. And they're back and forth. My boundary is between you and me. Your response to my boundary, now that's between you and God. So as long as I said what I said, I have no need to explain myself because of your feelings. Because an emotional response to your standard doesn't change, should not change your standard. People who can't handle the word no, they get emotional. But their emotional response to your standard should not change your standard. So I think we need to stop allowing people to guilt trip us into transforming our no into their yes. But God can handle a no. You can say no to God. He's asked you to do something. You can say no. You have that right to operate in your own will. But you're going to suffer the consequences for being disobedient. When you say no to yourself, you're actually saying yes to God. You know, I remember about, about 38 years ago, when my first child was born, she was seven pounds, six ounces, 20 inches long, tiny. And I remember putting her in a car seat and I had to take like one of those receiving blankets and I had to roll it up and fold it twice and prop it up on the side of her head. Um, the car seat just seemed to be too big. And she looked so little, but I remember driving slow all the way home. You know, the first day when your, your child is in a car with you, it's a scary day, but it's a happy day. Now, the next scary day is when they turn 16 and they start smelling themselves, <laughs> you know, and you're handing over, you're handing over the keys. Wow. Now they're moving from the passenger seat to the driver's seat. You know, for me, that was a scary moment. It can be a scary moment in your life when you have to hand over the keys because up to now you've been driving you chose the destination you chose the route you chose the speed now you're in the passenger seat but for me you know if you're going to drive i gotta trust you i gotta trust your driving you're not driving me and i can't trust your driving because it's all about control because whoever is in the driver's seat is in control there's just some people that I'm never going to drive with in the passenger seat. It's because I don't trust their driving. You know, my, my youngest son, he's an amazing driver. I will drive with him anywhere. He is an amazing driver. But he bought a side-by-side -side also. And for those of you who don't know what a side-by-side -side is, it's like an enclosed ATV. An ATV, an all-terrain vehicle, it, it is more of open. It's kind of like a, a, a four-wheeler or dune buggy or... But a side-by-side, -side, it's enclosed. I mean, it's got bucket seats, um, seat belts, doors, wind windshield, roof, a steering wheel. I mean, um, you can make it street legal by getting tags and insurance. And when I worked, first saw it, I'm, I said, that's a car. And so I stopped by his house one day just to see how it was doing. And he was showing me all the intricate designs of, and all the parts of the side-by-side. -side. And so he asked me if I wanted to ride. I said, sure. He said, you might want to buckle up and hold on to the handle. I'm like, what? Okay, so he drove me around the neighborhood. It was good. It was no problem. You know, it, it felt like a car. You know, I closed the door and everything was fine. And then he stopped by my house one day. He said, I'm about to run to Uncle Harold's house. You want to ride? So I'm thinking we're going to go to Uncle Harold's house. And then, you know, he come back and drop me off. Well, he goes down this little area, dirt, ride, dirt um, road, where I guess they go and they ride their um, uh, dirt bikes and, and things like that. And he said, you might want to, um, put on a coat. I'm like, okay. So we get in the car and, um, 
we're going down this dirt road and and he proceeds to drive the speed limit and he's driving a little slow and then it starts getting faster and starts getting faster and i'm like whoa slow down and you know jokingly he looks at me and he says who's driving i said you are but i'm riding well he got up to 70 he got up to 80 he got up to 90 and then he began to slow down and i'm holding on to the bars i'm holding on for dear life probably one of the scariest moments in my life he had full control because he was in the driver's seat i didn't have any control because i was in the passenger seat but i will tell you this i will probably never ride with him again in that side by side on that dirt road again but you know spiritually people find jesus handy to be in the car as long as he is in the passenger seat because something may come up i may need you lord something may require your services and, and jesus i might have a health problem or i may need some money and i may need you in the car but i'm not sure i want you driving because you see if jesus is driving then i'm not in charge of my life anymore you know if, if he's driving i'm not in charge of my wallet or my purse anymore if I put him in control, then, then it's no longer a matter of, of giving some money every now and then, and I'm feeling generous now, and, and then I'll give more. Now it's his wallet. It's scary. If Jesus is driving, I'm not the one in charge of my ego anymore. I no longer have the right to satisfy every self-centered ambition. No, no, no. It's his agenda. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not in charge of my mouth anymore. I don't get to gossip. I don't get to flatter. I don't get to deceive. I don't, I don't get to get out in a full rage and intimidate and manipulate and exaggerate stories. I get out of the driver's seat and I hand the keys over to him. When you move over to the passenger seat, you take up your cross. And the last point is, hand God the keys. What a step. When you move over to the passenger seat, you're taking up your cross. But when you hand over them keys, you've decided to follow him. You know, Matthew 16 and 25 says, But for whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. There's a few things that happens when you decide to hand over the keys and let Jesus drive. One of those things is called submission. Submission. Some people run from the word. Some people hate the word. Some people don't understand the word. But most people don't really know what it means. And so they're not actually able to carry it out. They're not actually able to operate in it. But submission means to willingly align yourself under the authority of another. Meaning it's a choice that you want to make. You don't have to submit. It's Every single one of us submits to somebody. It's a mandate. It's a command. And you suffer the consequences for not being obedient. But every single one of us submits to someone. First, we submit to God, according to James 4 and 7. Submit, therefore, to God. Then you submit to one another. Submitting to one another in the fear of God. That's Ephesians 5 and 21. Then Ephesians 5 and 22, it says, Wives submit to husbands, and husbands submit to to loving him. Wives, submit to your husbands as the Lord. In Ephesians 5 and 22. We are to submit to our authority, our shepherd in the church. In Hebrews 13 and 17, it says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your soul as those who will give an account, so that they may do this with joy, not groaning, for this would be unprofitable for you. Submission is a commandment. It's a mandate. It's not up for debate. It is what we are required to do. What Jesus is asking from us is for us to live our lives in submission to him. To be Jesus' disciple, we have to let him into the driver's seat. We have to let him in the driver's seat. And once he's in the driver's seat, hand over the keys. In closing, you know, I was doing my devotion this week and I read a story. It was humorous. And within that devotion, I kind of want to share it with you. There were two um, little ladies 
little old ladies who were driving this large car on a Sunday morning. And they were both so short that their heads were barely visible, you know, over the dashboard. And as they were cruising along, they came to this red light, but they went right through it. And soon they approached another intersection. And the light there, it was red also, but the car didn't stop. Rolled right through it. Then they came to a third red light. And the old lady in the passenger seat, she began to holler. She said, oh, my heavens, Mildred, did you see that you just ran through three red lights? You could have killed us. Mildred explained, oh, my stars, am I driving? Wow. For us to be able to sit back and not be concerned with whether with who's driving, it's a comfortable feeling. It's a comfortable feeling. The person who's driving is in control. I got a challenge for you. I got a challenge for you. I want you to ask yourself, am I submitted fully to Christ? Am I driving? Have I moved from the passenger seat? Have I handed Jesus the keys? Or am I still driving? Ask yourself today, on a serious note, who's in the driver's seat? Is it you or Jesus? I pray something has been said to encourage you. Have an amazing day.